Hi, I'm Lise Colucci, and I'm one of the life coaches at Queen Being. Today on this program, I talked to Wendy, who talked to me about parental alienation and attempting to co-parent with a narcissist. We also talked about strategies for helping children in these situations. If that sounds good. Hit subscribe and let's go. Hi, I'm talking to Wendy. Hi, Wendy. Hi. How are you doing? I'm good. I really wanted to talk about um, just in general trying to co-parent with a narcissist and protecting our children from the alienation that they bring to create. Okay. I would like to talk about um, parental alienation mm -hmm. and pathogenic parenting and specifically when you're co-parenting with an ex, how to protect your kids before the alienation happens. Okay. Um, so what, what goes on regarding the, the alienation? They're, um, they're kind of made to believe that they can only love one parent, mm -hmm. not both parents. Mm -hmm. They're given, they're given kind of an ultimatum of choosing. Mm -hmm. And the, usually the target parents rights are abused like either by not being invited to doctor's appointments or being told the kids being told you don't have to listen to them there's nothing they can do about it so you can do whatever you want mm -hmm. so then when you're trying to parent they're seeing it as annoying or abusive and at the worst cases they completely reject you and actually will refuse to be around you at all they see you trying to spend time with them as annoying and an invasion of their privacy so how, so you're asking how to preempt that sort of with the children that haven't been affected so far? Yes. And then also um, rebuilding the relationships when they have been alienated. I think both are important topics. And if we can kind of work them together, maybe. They are, yeah. So let's, let's look at the, um, at the ones that haven't been affected as much first. What in your experience with this has been helpful? I actually try my hardest to focus on positive. Mm -hmm. I, I was given the recommendation of healthy, happy, safe, and secure. Mm -hmm. And so I spend a lot of time doing fun activities, building family memories, reinforcing the family things we've done in the past, you know. And then what about in the, in the home um, when it comes to discipline and stuff? I, I would think that um, being very regular and being very um, predictable would be really important so that they know who you are and what to expect from you yes. um, rather than anything erratic happening so that when something does happen, it's just, oh, that's how mom is. That's what mom expects of us. Um, I would think regularity in general is, is a secure thing for a child to have in their life. And, and so with these younger ones or with the ones that aren't as affected, the narcissist is not making attempts at alienation at this point. Correct? Actually, no, it's okay. constant and it's oh. ongoing. It's, um, they're like just not I as affected would... yet. They're not as, um, they're not buying into it yet. Yes. Okay. Like if I have to parent and I have, to, and I, I would have to raise my voice, which sometimes happens, they're told, you know, mom just loses her temper because she's crazy and she's bipolar and, and that's why she's treating. So then they're constantly, every time that you have to parent or you have to raise your voice, they're looking at it through that lens. Mm. I have to remind them, you know what, moms do raise their voice sometimes. Moms have to parent and sometimes, you know, there's a time when you have to be more stern than others. And right. I have to re reinforce that because you're constantly being judged when you're doing things or going through everyday life. It sounds like you've been struggling with this for a long, a long enough time to have a pretty good grip on what you are, um, what you're working with. Yes. Um, <clears throat> what do you think is the most difficult point? What is, what is, is there an area that you, um, my biggest struggles honestly, is my kids are often targeted for not behaving the way that the narcissist would like. 
And because of that, they will be personally attacked. Mm. And when those attacks happen, it is very difficult as a parent to not to want to step in mm -hmm. and protect them. Because if I step in, the attacks become worse. Right. And even when they tell me that something has happened, I cannot call the narcissist out on their behavior in any way, shape, or form, or the retaliation's worse. Well, that's really challenging. So what do you do instead? I just apologize to, I'm like, I listen to them. I let them vent. Mm -hmm. I validate their feelings. And I tell them that mommy has no control of what happens, you know, outside of my house. And this is not something that I can fix for them. You know, and right. they are in counseling and I'm not sure always, you know, how the counselors respond to that. But I've even told the counselors, you know, this stuff is retaliated against. And, and teaching your children that they, their truth matters, mm -hmm. regardless of what dad is saying. Mm -hmm. and, and that's hard to do without bad mouthing him. But again, dad is making his choice. I understand. I hear you. You know, your, your side is valid. Mm -hmm. You know, your feelings are valid. What you, what you're telling me is your truth is, is real mm -hmm. um, because narcissists will just like they do to, to a, another adult, they will gaslight and try to convince you that what you're experiencing isn't really happening. So, Oh, it's I, frustrating. <laughs> I wish there was more. I wish that our government and DHS and you know, agencies understood and recognized this type of abuse mm -hmm. and protected children, and they just do not. They really right. don't get it. Right. And, I mean, it's sad when you're trying to protect your children and you realize you're completely helpless. It's a sad truth that it is not understood by most people who haven't experienced it. There actually is a parental alienation group in our area, but they, um, what they're focusing on and begging for is training in our area, training for like CPS workers, training for judges, training for the guardian ad litems and training for attorneys. So, and, and for therapists to be in our area so that there are people that recognize and understand this. And so that the people involved are able to say, oh, it's a duck. And not, you know, this is just some kind of mystery or, or you got, you're just making up stuff, some mm -hmm. mythical creature. You know, when you talk about parental alienation, they kind of see it as crazy talk. Like right. it's not a real thing. Right. And they don't. And I know there's been. Well, and it's such a subtle thing. It's not alienation in, in the sense of when a narcissist does this. It's not a cut and dry, you know, I'm taking the kids and, and hiding them from you kind of thing. It's the subtle, like you said, the subtle digs and the making the children feel guilty and the manipulation that goes behind what's happening so that it really does require specified training to both recognize and then know how to approach it. Um, when we're raised by narcissists, what I hear from adults who are adults now and they're recovering and healing from being raised by a narcissistic parent. You continually hear the programming that's in their heads, the lack of self-worth, the um, need to please others that, you know, there's, there's consistencies in how adults are trying to heal from this that you hear over and over. So I would suggest reading up on that, like listening to people's stories. I just did a, a video with a woman with um, a narcissistic mother. She had some great stuff to say of what it feels like um, mm -hmm. and what she's going through now as an adult um, sort of reclaim herself at this point. And um, that listening to that now can give you some clue, listening to that and getting, getting information on what it's like for a lot of people to, to have been raised mm -hmm. by them can help give you some tools for what to help your children with as they're going through it. So in other words, um, you know, and also, you know, if it, since it is a father, you know, what do we need from fathers that they're never going to get? They just aren't. And, and instead of being sad about it, which of course you can be sad too about it, but what can I do to help them 
teach have that for themselves. So you know maybe um, self worth and and pride and self. Um, a lot of people, you know, they need to feel um, approval from a father. Mm-hmm. You know, and it, that can be a healthy approval, or that can be tipped over to a codependent to talk, or you know, like it, a very yeah. unhealthy way. And we go toward the unhealthy when we don't receive that approval, right? And when we don't receive it in a loving and unconditional way. So how can we help our children to create that for themselves, just like we have to do? You know, what, would, what, what are people doing who are adults now to reparent themselves? And instead of having my children have to reparent themselves, how can I help them learn to fill these needs? You know, um, does that make sense? That's a, it's a little... I, uh- I think it's crazy. I don't know that I was raised by a narcissist, Mm -hmm. but I was raised in abuse from birth. Mm -hmm. And I actually came to the realization about a year ago, maybe six months ago, that I was actually bullying myself. That the reason that I was a victim of narcissistic abuse and had been most of my life, not but the reason that had happened was because I lacked boundaries in my own life. Mm -hmm. And because I felt like that's what I deserved, like that's where I belonged. And when I would be abused, I would beat myself up and say, that's what you deserve. That's where you belong. And when I was treated nicely, I was never comfortable. Yes. Because I didn't know how to handle it. Exactly. And so I do, I get it on a weird level. I absolutely understand what you're saying. And I have talked to my oldest, I guess I hadn't thought clearly how to teach that to my children how to teach children that I think that um, there's so much more there's so much more neuroplasticity with them and Mm -hmm. they don't have the set patterns we have and so it really can be a lot of it through example you know as you work on your own self-worth and your own healing of these places where you find yourself bullying yourself and not so much letting them hear what's going on in your head, but having them witness you, you know, taking care of yourself, self care um, mm-hmm. on a level that is in a daily practice. Um, Cause children, you know, they model after you and mm-hmm. a lot of people who are super successful or they, you know, talk about their parents and they're super, um, but together people will say, well, my mom always modeled a, a really great self-care. They, my mom always, you know, so it's a lot of it is, is that. I think the hard one, and I have had to do this with my children, is I did choose their dad. Of course, mm-hmm. they didn't choose their dad. My lack of boundaries and self-respect was a lot of how I chose their dad mm-hmm. and why I put up with him for the number of years I did. And accepting responsibility for my cho- choices and talking about boundaries to prevent that in the future, mm-hmm. I think it's been helpful. I mean, for people who are newly discovering what's going on and newly realizing that they're with a narcissist or a toxic person, what we mean by choice is not that you had a choice from the beginning. It's that yeah, no. it's, we, what you don't know, you don't know. And it's, yeah. you gotta forgive yourself that part, that the part that didn't know was just innocently stepped into something and really thought that it was doing the right thing for its life, for our lives, you know, and yeah. um, it's in retrospect that we see the choice. Mm-hmm. And, and it's the reason, the only reason to see that as a choice is number one, to forgive yourself for allowing anything, allowing, you know, I mean, it's not really allowing when there's an abuser and yet, <laughs> and yet there is that, it's like the same word with two meanings because yeah. moving forward from this point, once you have the uh, knowledge and the understanding and the awareness and you break those trauma bonds, mm-hmm. then, then choice becomes a different word, you know? Yes. And yeah. So I think it's a it's survivor instead of a victim then, because absolutely. you have the choice to prevent it in the future because you know, it, you recognize that it's a choice. Exactly. And then I would say even further, you could go into a third thing, which is thriver and mm-hmm. take that choice and make, um, decisions for your life and yeah. um, make change in your in your inner life I love that I like that yeah it sounds like you have done a lot of work with this and like you said you've created your own support group around it and um, 
experts and have had a lot of resources that you've used to gain information to help your own life and help others. So what would you offer to people who are newly going through a divorce with a narcissist I, and there's children involved? Understanding that even when you're not in a fight, mm -hmm. to be documenting and keeping track of things. Mm -hmm. and you know, I didn't even know what a narcissist was when I, even when I went through my divorce. I had no clue. Okay. It was years later out of self-protection that I had to learn that stuff. Mm -hmm. So I think the hard part is knowing what you're up against. If I had, if I had hindsight, you know, years ago when it first started, I would have done things much, much differently. I would have been much more careful with the wording in my decree, I would have been much more careful in having things more cemented down. Mm -hmm. And I would have been much more careful in the amount of rights that were given. Mm -hmm. Joint legal custody with somebody that is controlling oh, right. is not healthy because they abuse it. They abuse your rights. They exclude you as much as possible. And because they have joint legal custody, you can't stop it. Right. You can't right. stop them from abusing their rights. So you would have went for more of a visitation type situation. Yes. Okay. That's good to yeah, know. That's, that's a really, those are really good pieces of information. I also would say if you, if you're able and if you have the support, mm -hmm. having somebody else help you or go through the documentation for you to organize it is extremely helpful. I, I find it extremely exhausting and stressful. Well, thank you. Thank you, Wendy. That was all really helpful information. And I'm hoping that it can reach a lot of parents out there who are going through this um, and need the support. And, and, and then I'm hoping it'll affect the lives of a lot of kiddos out there who are, who have parents who are um, struggling with how to cope with this. Thanks for watching. Again, I'm Lise Colucci. And for information about coaching, group coaching, or to be a guest on this program, see the links below. Don't forget to hit subscribe. Thank you. Bye-bye.